I'm posting this video for some of the die-hard DIYers out there who are into salvaging. I've been trying to remove the stem valve from this oxygen bottle. It is empty, by the way, and I finally got it loose. And before I had failed several times, I looked up on the internet what direction thread these things have. I couldn't determine if it was a left-hand thread or a right-hand thread. Now propane tanks like these kind here are typically a left hand thread. If you wanted to remove this spud off of here, you would have to turn it the opposite direction that you would normally turn it to get it to loosen. So after messing with this thing, I heated the neck up a little bit with a torch and unfortunately I had to anchor it down with this much effort in order to make this happen. It was on there so tight that it took all four of these straps. I tried two at first and I was breaking them and bending them and everything else. So, finally got it loose though. This may seem like a stupid video to a lot of you guys, but I just got done looking on the internet for about three hours to find out what direction thread these things use and was unable to obtain the information I was looking for. So, there we are. It's just a standard thread. So, I'm gonna go ahead and post that. So maybe I can save someone two, three hours next time they type in the word, what direction do you turn a stem bottle on an oxygen bottle to remove it. Now, of course, this would be a problem for most applications. You obviously can't just drill a hole into a bottle that you intend to pressurize back up. This one already has several holes drilled in it from when I've used it from other projects. And these holes will be filled back in. But it was the only way I could anchor this thing down with the uh, force necessary. Well, that just broke off in there. So that one's basically plugged. This is going to be turned into a gasification device. I'm going to be uh, using it as a carbon reaction combustion chamber. I um, have a feeling that aluminum would do very well in a gasifier because it won't rust. And this is a heavy enough metal that there's no way I'm going to get it up to the thousand degrees that it needs to melt. Aluminum is just too hard to melt in, in, in certain zones. You would need the fires of hell to melt this thing. Okay, so that's how thick it is. The walls of this thing. Still hot from cutting it. And this is about 6.8 millimeters. So, pretty thick. This residue is from another experiment I did a while back. I used this thing as a, a still, I guess you could say. Here's a closer look at that bottom. It is definitely thick. Let's see if... Uh, about nine millimeters right there and it's concave so it's a pretty big thick ingot there on the bottom of these things I'm going to be turning this into a charcoal gasifier I'll shine a light down there so we can get a look at that this camera has a light but oh that is so bright Got this thing on laser. Yeah, you probably can't see that with the crap. Nothing special to look at, just some residue from when I used this for a still of sorts. 
but there isn't any like sponge material inside of here. Some of these tanks, like in the settling tank, would have had a porous sponge in there. So this is just an entirely evacuated tank. And another reason some of these tanks I, I heard about have the sponge in there is to slow down accidental escape of gas. This would be interesting. It is kind of burning. Didn't flare up like some good aluminum powder would though. You don't even really need magnesium ribbon or anything sometimes, it'll just poof up. <laughs> 